Hi guys, it's your girl from Philly. Welcome to today's episode of Handcrafted Wines, where we make great wine at home the fun and easy way. Before we get started, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any episodes. If I'm stuck in a cloud, drifting away to get out. In today's episode of Handcrafted Wines, we're going to be racking wine, which means we're going to be moving our wine from its primary fermentation vessel to its secondary fermentation vessel. Before we do that, we'd like to check the specific gravity of our wine at this time. Now, this batch of grape juice wine was produced 15 days ago, which means it's time to not only do the racking, but to find out how much alcohol we actually made. The way we'll find that out is to subtract the reading today of specific gravity from the number that we had 15 days ago when we first pitched our yeast. Now, when we began this batch, it was at 1.105. Now we're gonna test and see what the gravity is today to determine how much alcohol we've actually made so far. The piece of equipment that I'm going to be using today is called a racking cane. And what's interesting about a racking cane is it pumps the liquid into a secondary vessel through gravity, but it also has this piece on the end so that the leaves that have collected at the bottom don't go into the new vessel. So I'm gonna start this off very slowly because I do see um, there is some leaves at the bottom. It's not a lot because there wasn't any fruit. It was just juice. And I'm going to put the other end into our beaker so that we can get our sample. And, <laughs> we don't want to do that. And this works by just pumping it once or twice. So I'm going to hold on to this. Yeah, that's better. We'll be able to, we started motion just from one pump, which is, is really good. Now my hands have been washed and sprayed with star sand sanitization solution. So I'm going to top, stop it with my hand and I'll let it continue in the secondary fermentation vessel. And I don't know if you can see, but it, it does have some haziness, some cloudiness to it, which means it's not close to being cleared. It's just ready to be wrapped. Okay. I'm going to get my hydrometer. And we're going to see what our reading is. Spray it with a little star sand. See if I can get out of the way of this traffic and test our gravity. Wow. So our current gravity is at 1.00, nope, 1.010. So I'm gonna do the math. And according to the alcohol, um, the ABV calculator, we currently have 12.47% alcohol by volume, which is not a bad amount. Um, as I mentioned before, at 10%, you're at wine and you're shooting for 12 to 14%. So we've actually done good so far. I'm going to screenshot this so I can record it later. Okay. And we're almost done racking actually. So in the time where we were taking that sample, most of our racking took place on its own. I'm gonna tilt this a little bit so we get everything. 
I may have to do another little pump to get it activated again or two. There we go. And once I think we've gotten as much as we're going to get out, which is where we are right now. Yeah, that's where we are. I'm going to get a bucket for our racking cane so we don't make a mess. And the hose. And I'll sanitize this a little bit later in a bucket of star sand. So if you see, there's some residue at the bottom of the vessel. That's our dead yeast, um, which is called Lees, L-E-E-S. That's the part that we don't want. They did their job for us, so we're grateful, but we don't need them any longer. And we're going to take what is in this beaker and add that to the secondary as well. Now what we finish with is a little under one gallon. We started with one gallon, but we're a little under one gallon. And I think I would prefer to just add a little water, not a lot. I don't want to add any sugars right now because I want it to clear a little bit more. A one gallon batch would typically yield um, five 750 milliliter bottles of wine. I think we're going to get four and maybe some change with this one. Because we've already done a lot of our primary fermentation, we don't want to have a lot of airspace in our bottle. And I, I actually want to check the gravity now to see what the reading is with the additional water in it. This time I'm just going to pour it out. Are we at 250 milliliters? Oh, a little bit extra. I just want to do one more reading to see how much that water affected the ABV. It didn't affect it a whole lot. So let's see where we are still. We slightly moved a notch. So what was our second number? Our second number was 1.010. And it's closer to 1.000. Yeah. So it's more like the 12%, let me just change the number in here. No, then I'm wrong with that one. 1.0, oh, so it's pretty much where it was before. Let me just make sure. Yeah, it's pretty much where it was before. It didn't change very much. So I'm comfortable with saying that it's still that 12 point something um, ABV that we had before. Yeah, we had 12.47, so it's more like 12.32 now, which is still within the range that we're looking for.
Now that it's off of the leaves, and one of the reasons why you wanna take your batch off of the leaves is after a while, you'll start developing some off flavors because it's basically, you know, the microorganisms are dead, so they're decomposing in there. You don't wanna to continue to keep them in your batch. Now, it wouldn't harm you if it did. Some people just let it clear on its own in the primary. I'm not saying it's, it's right or wrong, it's just something that's doable. The other thing I'm gonna do is just taste a tiny bit of it. I just wanna see how dry it is at this point. Just a tiny sip. Like it's barely a teaspoon in here. Wow. But this would be just regular Welch's grape juice. This is actually really good. So it's not bone dry. It has some residual sweetness to it. I would say that it's more along the lines of a semi-sweet, but it is very, very early and very new. So the alcohol is a little rough on the back of the throat. It needs some time to clarify, it needs some time to clear, and it needs some time to add to age. There's a secondary process called malolactic fermentation that I'm still actually learning about, but I know it takes place during secondary fermentation. So you and I will probably learn about it together, or you might have more information about malolactic fermentation than I do. We're gonna take the same airlock that we had before, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to empty out the star sand that's inside of it. And sanitize the whole thing and then refill it with star sand. Okay. Put the cap back on. And at this point, we're gonna let this batch sit, I would say for the next few months, just to give an opportunity to clear some more. When we rack it again, we'll either rack it back into a one gallon vessel for the purpose of um, bulk aging, or I may transfer it into bottles at that time and let them age in the bottles. I prefer bulk aging for the reason that there's still gonna be some residual leaves, some residue at the bottom of your, your fermenter if you let it bulk age so that when you go to actually rack your wine into bottles, there's absolutely none. You'll have clear bottles. You'll be able to see through to the bottom of your bottle without any residue whatsoever. And that's goal. That wasn't the best batch um, sample to look at. Let's look at this one. Yeah, which absolutely no residue at the bottom. All right, so this was a, really short episode. All that's left is to clean up everything, make sure everything stays sanitized. And now I have a fermenter to make another batch of wine. I wanna thank you for spending this time with me. I appreciate you coming and watching um, Handcrafted Wine. Please help me grow this channel by telling your friends, like, sharing, and subscribing, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. <laughs> And all the things that I've done, I can't say that I'm proud. But it's no more changing like the fall.